G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In today's troubleshooting video, we're going to talk about air entrainment. Specifically, we'll talk about the types of air in oil, where air entrainment originates, and how air releases from oil. Putting all these three things together is going to give us a really good picture of where air entrainment comes from and what we can do to prevent it from happening in the first place. Right, so let's talk about the types of air in oil. Now in the oil foam video, we talked about the idea of entrainment versus foam. Okay, so you've got three types of air in an oil reservoir. You've got dissolved air, which isn't a problem, it's just dissolved into the bulk oil. Now, mineral oils can probably have about 10% bulk, um, sorry, dissolved air, and synthetics will usually have in the region of about 2%. So just the base oil itself is a, a major contributor to how much air you'll have in the system. All right, after dissolved air, you've got entrained air. So that's, you know, think of a, think of a beer. You've got bubbles that are just in the beer, but they haven't broken out to the surface and they haven't become like the head of the beer. All right, so that's entrained air. And of course, you've got the foam on top, you know, like any good beer decent amount of foam but the foam in an oil system should break very readily so a bit of foam is is kind of normal um, and in fact we're going to show that it's desirable but you don't want an amount of foam that's going to have it spilling onto the floor all right so let's talk about entrained air because entrained air or significant amounts of entrained air can cause all kinds of problems you can have cavitation vibrations oxidation micro dieseling loss of pressure all kinds of problems can result from a significant amount of entrained air. So let's talk about where entrained air comes from. Okay, so one thing that it could um, originate from is the return line. So you've, in any oil reservoir, you'll have a returns line and it's feeding oil back into the reservoir. Now the position of that um, relative to the oil level is gonna have a significant amount of uh, of impact on the amount of entrained air. So just like a, a waterfall going into a river, it's gonna introduce um, little air bubbles, right? And if you increase the distance between the return line and the oil level, right, you're gonna get more bubbles. That's only natural, and I think that's pretty intuitive to everyone. So note that it is the relative position of the oil in the reservoir, so the oil level, and the return line. Okay, so you could have a really low return line, but if your oil uh, at reservoir level is even lower, you're still going to run into problems with entrained air. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the reservoir sizing, because realistically what we want, right, is the way that we get rid of entrained air is that bubbles naturally are going to want to rise to the surface, where if the surface tension is low enough, or they'll pop, right, that releases air into the system. Okay, so that's what you want. You actually want entrained air to rise up, get to the top, form foam, but a very unstable foam that is going to dissipate very quickly. All right, so how can reservoir sizing impact this? Well, imagine that you have an amount of foam. Again, that's perfectly normal, and it's going to pop because it's in contact with the air and has relatively um, low surface tension. Well... Imagine if my reservoir was much narrower. Now the contact area between the same amount of bubbles and the air above the reservoir is much lower. So it's gonna take this system much longer to break that foam than it would have in the previous system. So that's an example of where reservoir sizing can become a problem. The other instance in which reservoir sizing can become a problem is when we talk about the residence time. So there is going to be some amount of entrained air uh, in the system, that's that's unavoidable. It comes in through the return line, and as I said before, in an ideal scenario, you want that oil to sit in the reservoir long enough that it allows the bubbles to rise to the surface where they pop. However, if our residence time is not long enough, what we get is that air just diverting into the, the suction side. Um, that's obviously a, pro a problem because the air will just end up in your system. So again, Reservoir sizing, the amount of oil that's in the reservoir, and the throughput rate uh, are all going to have input impacts 
on the amount of entrained air that ends up uh, in your application. All right, so let's also talk about the mechanics of how we get bubbles to rise to the surface. In actual fact, something that we know, uh, and this is very well known from things like ball drop tests, is that the size of the bubble dictates the speed at which it rises to the surface. So I think this is pretty intuitive. Larger bubbles are going to rise faster. So in an ideal scenario, the way that you get entrained air to break out, right, is to actually have larger bubbles. How do we get larger bubbles? Well, in an ideal world, what we want is for smaller bubbles to collide together and make larger bubbles. So we want them to agglomerate. The only way that you can really do this and achieve this in a reservoir is if you have turbulent flow, which is able to kind of break the separation between the bubbles. So if you have a very still reservoir, you're not going to achieve this, and it's going to take much longer for the entrained air to rise to the surface. The other thing that can cause um, uh, increases in entrained air is actually the temperature. So colder oil is able to dissolve much more air than a warm oil. So as the temperature increases, that air is actually going to break out of solution and become entrained air. So dissolved air when it's cold will become entrained air when it's warm. So if you think about a application that goes through rapid heating and cooling cycles, you're going to be introducing air in solution and then causing it to break out on a cyclical basis. Right, so that can in introduce a lot of entrained air into your system. All right, let's talk about the inlet placement as well. All right, if the inlet is too high, right, what that's going to cause is on the suction side, potentially foam or bubbles or just straight air to end up on the inlet. Right, that's going to mean that you have a whole bunch of entrained air that ends up in your application. It's obviously pretty undesirable. Now let's talk about the impact of silicon anti-foam additives. So something that you'll probably be aware of is that most oils have some kind of anti-foam additive. Um, most commonly it's silicon based uh, polymers, but we also have acrylate uh, polymers as well. Now silicon anti-foam additives are really interesting. The way that they function is to uh, be attracted to an air oil interface, right? So silicon, um, Additives um, are not in solution, they're in suspension, and they are attracted to any kind of air-oil interface. Now, most of the time, that means that they want to go to the surface where all the foam is, right? But that's not necessarily the case. You could have a silicon anti-foam additive that is also attracted to your entrained air bubbles. Now, why is that a problem? Well, if they collect at the interface of a bubble, Silicon antifoam additives are significantly heavier, that is, they have much higher density than obviously the air bubble, but also uh, heavier density than the uh, surrounding bulk oil. So it's actually going to slow the progress of the bubble to the surface. Right? So this is a really, really important one to, to, to kind of note because there are a lot of companies out there that uh, market silicon uh, treatment systems and they generally market it for the treatment of foam problems so people see a significant amount of foam in their system and they want to treat it with some, some kind of aftermarket additive the problem is if you over treat your system with silicon anti-foam additives you end up with a huge amount of entrained air because over-treating the system can cause all those entrained air bubbles to retain themselves in the bulk oil for much longer. They don't make it to the surface to break out as foam bubbles. Okay, so that's a really important one. Be very, very cautious when people come to you with aftermarket solutions uh, for treating foam because you could potentially make the problem a lot worse. Remember, foam is largely a cosmetic problem Largely, it can also be a safety problem if you have foam all over the floor, but entrained air is really bad for your equipment. All right, so that was the reservoir. 
but then the inlet or the suction side is going to end up probably at a pump. Um, so again, if the oil level is low, you're going to be sucking in a whole bunch of air into the pump. So that's one source of entrained air. The other way that you can do it, and this is throughout the system, is remember that uh, the, the, the pump is probably connected to the suction um, by some kind of flange, right? So you've got a flange, there's probably some kind of gasket in between, right, that's bolted together. If that seal isn't perfect, um, then air could end up coming in to the pump uh, from that source as well. All right, so any leaks that we have in the system, any air leaks, could be a source of entrained air. And finally, you've got the application itself. Remember, if this is spray or splash lubricated, it is guaranteed to entrain air in your system. And so you are reliant on the reservoir residence time to get rid of that air. Right? It could also be that the oil level is too low in your application. That could introduce air into the system as well. Right? So there's, there's so many ways that air can get into your system. And realistically, you are relying on residence time and turbulence in the reservoir to bring those bubbles to the surface where their low surface tension helps break uh, that, that bubble. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, if you've got questions or comments, or even if you can think of another source of air that I haven't thought of, please put it in the comment section below. Um, otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.